The fact that sexual harassment is finally getting the public hearing that we've been waiting for is a relief. Sexual harassment's been illegal since 1986, but it still has persisted unabated, especially in environments that are mostly female workforces, but with male supervisors. So you see that in restaurant workers, hotel workers, farm workers. Those workers tend to be also more dispersed, more isolated, more vulnerable. And then there are women who are working in male-dominated environments where they're new to the workplace and there's probably a lot of hostility to their being there. We're also vigilant to the ways in which victims are silenced in talking about their, their experiences because women being able to share information with one another and go to management and bring their concerns forward, that's really what's gonna end this environment of harassment. We're also concerned about mandatory arbitration clauses in employment contracts. Roughly 50% of the private workforce is covered by such agreements, and that means that they can't go to court if they have a discrimination case that they want to bring to light. This is a time of reckoning. It's a time for policymakers and workers and employers and unions and all other stakeholders to be looking hard at what makes harassment flourish. There are some legislative solutions that we're closely watching, some on Capitol Hill, some in the state legislatures. All of these measures in combination with public education, media, the messages we get through movies and TV, and of course litigation when rights have been violated. All of these are important pieces of overcoming the challenges that sexual harassment pose to women in the workplace.